Hello, if you're looking for sewing ideas, sewing plans and updates, then this is one of my usual Sunday sews. Stick around. Hello everybody, I'm moving over to the side because I think I've got a lot to show you today um, in terms of pictures up here. Right, so hello everybody welcome back if you're an existing subscriber slash follower hello if you're new i'm sam sequin girly hope you've had a good week it's this vlog is coming out on sunday which is when i always bring out my sort of just update vlogs and then you always look out for in the week on a tuesday or wednesday for a sort of a more specific vlog if you've not watched before you will get a wide variety of information from Patterns I'm using, patterns I'm looking at, things I'm sewing, things I've been doing and just random life stuff too. So whilst you're watching this, if you're watching it on Sunday, I will be at the Southern Social, which is the in-person sewing event that I organise. And this event runs in Buckinghamshire in a place called Princess Risborough and it's in the town hall. You can drop your things off outside and then go and park and parking is less than five minutes away. We provide refreshments and a cake and pressing station and cutting station and swaps table and a raffle. And the rest is over to you to bring what you want. We have people who bring like patchwork paper piecing, bag making, uh, people like myself who are doing clothes making. Some people cut things out. Some people are hand sewing. If you would ever like to come do email us at southernsocial at gmail.com where Mary and I will get back to you with details, information, etc. Have to book a place. We do charge because we've got to cover the costs of everything, including the hire of the hall. And there are, I think there's no places left in July and I think there's one place left in June. They're the dates we've got out at the moment. So if you are interested, do drop an email to us. If we want to have a look at information, there is the Southern Social Instagram page and also a Facebook group so you can go in there and meet other people that come and ask questions. So whilst I am sewing and <laughs> it's been a bit of a head scratcher trying to decide what to sew, I've got various things cut out. I thought I'm not cutting anything new out. I need to sew something I've got cut out. So trying to decide what that is right now but I will tell you about that next week and how it went and everything and I'll share a few pictures of the Southern Social as well. So right now I'll tell you what I've been up to. So I am wearing one of my makes. I showed this partly finished in last week's episode. So I'll just stand up a minute. So here it is. You go in closer. So this fabric is from By Grazalia or By Grazalia. I don't know how to say it. I'll put the link to their fabrics below. They've had some remnant uh, sales recently and that's what I got this. It's like a metre of the fabric couldn't resist really it's like <laughs> it's like rhubarb and custard flavored sweets i used the billy jumper pattern and the top of the bigger sleeve of the billy jumper but then cut it and added a band on the bottom to get the proper like sort of poof on it because it's t-shirt weight fabric it doesn't stick out it sort of flattens down which is nice the selvage on the fabric is the inverse so i put that for the neckline which i like and just use the billy top for the the body shape so i was looking at birds in the garden we get sparrow hawks sometimes so i'm really happy with this it's like spring in a fabric and the earrings i'm wearing i picked up yesterday if you're uk based or i think europe based they are a company called flying tiger that sell all sorts of home things craft things and they always have different things in so i picked up these um if i don't know that flying tiger have made it to the us yet but they're such an interesting shop. I love like their different things that come in like homeware and just they're great for like at Christmas when you want like little stockingy filler bits. They're perfect for that. So last week I also showed you my cut out blue double gauze Tammy Handmade Naya. That is now done. So while I'll shift over a bit, while I'm talking, I'll put in picture here of me wearing it slash styling it. So now I've made the Tammy Handmade Naya in like thicker knit fabrics, t-shirt fabrics, linen and double gauze. So you can sort of see the different ways that it sort of works. 
and I have resolved the 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 tank. I've forgotten the name of her again. Largo, the Largo tank by Itch to Stitch. I've resolved it. I had to get out an old copy, similar top that I've had for years from M and S. And you can now see on the side, it's on that rolly up thing, hasn't it? You can see how I've shaped the side there. So I've gone in and then back out. So like this, and that makes all the difference. I sort of laid it on and then just tried it, put it on and went bingo, I've got it right. So I will adjust the pattern to that shape now for future makes. I'm definitely going to make more. And again, coming in here is picture, I think, not video, picture of me wearing it. So that's perfect for when you just need a little something, isn't it? Um, need to put the arm uh, bits on now. Let's put these things over here now that I've told you about them. And then, I don't think I mentioned this, we had a duvet cover that had seen better days. I'd put some nail varnish on it and I had put a bit of foundation on it at some point and despite my great stain removal skills you can't get nail varnish off fabric and it was also it's a good few years old and when something's seen better days and then you get a few stains on it you're like okay it's time for it to come out of rotation and I really did not want to throw away such a large piece of fabric that obviously there was the stained bits and the bits that weren't looking great but I found enough to cut a couple of pillowcases out and a pair of bedtime shorts. And this fabric is perfect for that because it's just that nice cotton and it's been washed a lot of times so it feels nice. So they're like proper Bermuda shorts. I haven't decided on the length yet. I think that's the front. But, but it's what you want, isn't it? When the weather's a bit warmer but you want to put something on at bedtime while you're sort of bumming around. So I will decide on the length. But these are out of my go-to pattern. And I'm just going to show you. Last year, I made these two pairs. So last year, I made this pair out of a viscous, which was a remnant from one of the lovely independent fabric shops. That's the back because I put a patch pocket on. And I also made these out of a red double gauze I bought from rainbow fabrics and I used this waistband I got from um, Abercom and I wear both of those trousers a lot and I actually went back and I watched my summer review video now I'm not a big fan of watching my own vlogs and uh, it does feel weird but I was struggling to think about last summer so I went back and sort of threw half eye like that watch the key bits and I wax lyrical about wearing these a lot I was like okay and I know a lot of people wear do the Pomona pants by Anthea Allen and I did have a look and go mm, should I get that pattern now that pattern has no side seam which is really nice and the waistband is part of the fabric but I have this pattern it's it's a big four which is unusual for me it's new look 6271 Never done any of these other variations, but um, I did a toile back this time last year of the shorts. I never put the drawstring in. Life is too short. And I modified it over time to include a full bottom adjustment, which is like this. So you can see there that extra bit of fabric in the sort of the bottom curve. So that bit of fabric there and it goes down to nothing. So you slice it open and widen it. So I thought I put all that effort into getting these right. Why would I need another pattern? So I used this to make these and it was a good revisit, like a low stress revisit, because now I can make a, another nice summer trouser pair without feeling like they're at risk of going wrong so trousers more trousers i feel like i showed you these while i started them so i took the sew over it ultimate trouser pattern which i've made before with the side zip 
And I realised what I didn't like was not having a waistband because I am a tucky in top person and lack of waistband can be a problem with that. And so I thought I would do an experiment and have a go at adding a waistband. So I did put the waistband on, put them on and it was too high up. So I like a high waist, but this was too, too high. So I unpicked the waistband, cut off the requisite amount on the trouser and reattached the waistband. I have put elastic in the waistband, but not a huge amount, just enough so that at the back instead of the dart, it gathers it in but also enough that give that I can get them on I didn't want like the wide leg ones lots of gathering I wanted more of a smooth line and I'm really happy with how they've turned out now I've had a good look now at the the design pictures for how these trousers should look and I've realized they're meant to be a crop or well, funnily enough they're not on me because of my height and also they are a bit more capri panty sort of like don't know what word I want they're more yeah I think pre pant is the word I want and the first pair I made were definitely not like that I like them but they weren't like that so I'm probably going to make a third pair that's more how they were meant to look because I've not needed to make a full bottom adjustment and I do like the shape and it's a nice straightforward pattern so yeah Hopefully you can see a picture in here. Look at these two together. I mean, is that too much? <laughs> I don't know, though, because the pink pulls across both, doesn't it? Anyway, I'll put some pictures in here of me wearing them. Now, on that subject of talking about trousers, I ended up looking at So Liberated. Now, I've never really looked at their patterns, but they do a dress which... It's quite popular. I can't remember which one it's called now. Is it the fringe dress? No, that's chalk and notch, isn't it? Anyway, there's a pattern that I suddenly, when I saw it, went, oh, that's a popular one. That's it. So liberated hinterland dress. That seems to be one that people really like. I'm not hugely bothered, but I can see why other people would like it. But they do have some really nice trouser patterns. So they have 30% off, always waiting for a deal. And so I got myself the Arthur um, pants, which are a barrel leg type trouser. That's the, probably the best way I can describe them. That sort of curve round. Various options, including an optional zip fly or elasticated waist. You know, I love a pan with a variety, so I thought I'd give those a try. And then, because wow, you got 30% off, I also went for the Aronite, which are similar but different in that they've got that sort of wider pocket that's like an integral part of the trouser leg. So I really like the look of those. And again, an option to have a cuff on the bottom or not. And just to say, their patterns, oh, and you can do that Aronite in a woven or knit. Love that. Yeah, these felt a little bit sort of tilly in the button. Stella jogger, but different. Um, I'm just trying to find the uh, sizing. Here we go. So they go from... A size 0 to 34, which is a waist 25 to 52 and a half. So that's a, that's a good size range. And hip 33 and a half to 61, but in the finished measurement is 66.5. And then, <laughs> while I was there, I also picked up Chanterelle pants and shorts. And these ones are another interesting ones because you can have a wide leg or a tapered in leg with a really interesting pocket as well. I had a little bit pocket vibe of um, the sepia pants, which obviously if you're not a Closet Core member, don't have access to. So when I've tried these, I'll be able to compare them for you. So hopefully info has been coming up here. Jess is having a look at their patterns as well. She quite liked to look at one with a really interesting yoke on there. So you 
I kind of, I know I've just said I wouldn't buy the Pomona because I've already got a wide leg and then I bought three trousers. <laughs> but I think I like to try a new pattern company because it's nice to see how they compare. I liked the variety in their trousers. So I felt that there was a good enough variety to have those versus buying something that was too similar to what I had. So what am I working on? I have not got anything else started that needs finishing apart from the things that are cut out in bags. So let me get what's cut out in bags. So just like last week, <clears throat> I still have the sagebrush and the I Am Barbara, which might be what I do at the Southern Social. And I still have a sepia pants in green to, uh, to sew up. And another version of the cow neck top, which was the How To Do Fashion Danmark. And I did it in the leftover fabric that I made some trousers in. So I will not be having a big cutting out session, however much I want to, until I've sewn some of those up. I'm trying to be a little bit strict on myself about that because um, I've got all these ideas pinging around and I could just spend ages just having fun. I know not everyone loves it, but I love a cutting out session. And instead of having a big cutting out session and just building them up and up, I need to sort of work through some things that I wanted to do. And what's not there is the Notches Judy faux wrap top as well. So I just need to do those because they're almost like hanging over me now. And then it's trouser time. And I've managed to get um, another pattern test. So Izzo Studio put a call out the other week for pattern testers. And I got an email yesterday saying that I'd been accepted. So I will be focusing on that. The other things I need to finish are the patchwork jacket. So I can film the vlog for you on that. And there is something that I can't show you that I have almost finished, which is an exciting collaboration coming out super soon. I'll tell you who it's with now. It's with lovely Sarah of Sarah. So Sarah Style, she and I have done a little collab together. So the second I get it finished, I'll film the end and hopefully it'll be out this week coming my Tuesday, Wednesday slot. I made one purchase this week, which was something that arrived. So I didn't purchase it this week. It arrived having purchased it a couple of weeks ago, actually, from the Fabric Godmother in the bank holiday sale. Um, they were so overwhelmed, they could, their usual delivery time didn't work. And that's fine. I would rather wait. So I picked up this green, emeraldy green, like this is probably like Wizard of Oz green, isn't it? Ponty, I thought, nice pair of wide leg trousers. I don't feel I have enough of those in my life yet. And what about, yeah, see, love it. All spring-like. So I got myself a good amount to make a wide leg trouser. So other things to tell you about is the dates are out for the virtual social. So every month for May, June and July, there are two virtual socials. There is a daytime one from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. or 1.30 p.m. or 2 p.m. Can't remember now. Uh, British summertime. And then there is a afternoon slash evening one i've varied that sometimes fridays sometimes saturdays sometimes sundays so there's two a month to choose from we've done the daytime ones because the feedback was people like that chance and lovely christine will always be on those and if i'm working uh lovely sam of so let's sparkle with sam is going to help as well so thank you to sam um, and then the evening slash weekend ones will be Christine and I. So we've tried to fit in around Christine's adventures. So if you would like to come, I'll put the link below the Eventbrite link to all the dates. If you're not sure what they're about, you can join in as much or as little as you want. So you don't have to have your camera on. You don't have to have your mic on. You can just listen if you're nervous the first time you come. Just, just leave everything switched off and just listen and see how you feel. You don't have to come for the whole time. You don't have to sew. 
it is really just a way that Christine and I created to allow people to have friends in squares that have sewing in common. So if you've got a question, you can ask it. But if you don't feel confident to or you don't know how to, you can drop me a message and I'm happy to ask it and get the conversation going for you. When you book, there's an opportunity to put that in there as well. The technology requirements, it's Google Meet, so it's no specific app or anything. It should just work online. And um, if you have technical issues, just let me know and I'm, I'll be there to help you. Generally, people are not having any problem at all. And you will get the info sort of 24 hours before it happens. If something gets, happens in my life, it might be slightly less than 24 hours, but you will always get it in advance. You get a diary invite and you get an email from Eventbrite with the link in as well. You get an invite to a private Facebook group, which is only people who've attended the virtual socials. Uh, and we also have a chat in there. So if anyone wants to offer anything for a swap, you can. And um, it really is just sort of a, a bit of sort of a sewing community in, in a virtual format. If you have any ideas or any requests, we'd love to hear them. It's Christine, Mary and I are going to have a little plan session, see if we can think of anything else. But we'd love to see you there. And if you're not sure, just drop me a message and I can answer any questions as well. I'm going to head off now and tidy up what you can't see, which is a mess on the floor. <laughs> and then start getting ready for the social tomorrow, just sort my bag out, that sort of thing. And I'll catch you soon. Bye.